Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. I'm with the Dallas Branch Library and today we are going to be talking about healthy homemade dog treats. We are doing this in honor of our summer reading theme which is Tales and Tales. Our summer reading program will be lasting from now until August 21st of 2021. You can stop by any local library in the Gaston County Public Library System to pick up your reading record and get started. We have some amazing prizes this year, so if you haven't gotten started, I would do so as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So today we are making three different recipes. Um, the peanut butter cookies and the vegan peanut butter and banana cookies are very similar. There's just a few changes. And then we have a frozen apple treat, which is great for during the summer. So let's get started with our peanut butter cookies. The things that you're going to need for ingredients are two cups of rice flour. I use rice flour because it is more healthier for dogs. One half cup of creamy peanut butter. You can use crunchy peanut butter. It just may um, not mix as well and you may have to adjust your flour ratio and your water ratio. Two eggs and one fourth cup water. I also want to mention that the creamy peanut butter I use is also organic. So it does fall in line with just giving a, a healthier option to my pet. Some equipment that you are going to need is a large bowl, a baking sheet, a rolling pin, a mixing spatula, a cookie cutter, and of course an oven. So first go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And while that preheats, we're going to combine the rice flour and the peanut butter and the eggs into one large bowl. Once we get that good and combined, you're going to realize your mixture is very flaky. So this is where the water comes in. Add the water one tablespoon at a time until the dough can be rolled out. So throw some flour down on the table, roll your dough out, and then using cookie cutters, cut out shapes. Once you have all your shapes cut out, place those onto a baking sheet, and you can put them in the oven for 15 minutes. Now these treats do not spread out. They rise up a little bit, so you do not have to spread them out too much. I was able to get about 30 on my baking sheet. But if you have a larger baking sheet or you're using two separate ones, depending on the size of your cookie cutter and how big you want your cookies to be, you can get 36 treats out of this ball of dough. So once they're out of the oven, make sure that you let them cool completely before you hand them out. And for storing them, you can store them in an airtight container for one week or freeze them for up to three months. And as you can see, my puppy is patiently waiting for his treat. So next we have the vegan peanut butter and banana cookies. These are very similar to the ones we just went over. There's just a few short changes. For this one, you only need one cup of rice flour. Again, one fourth cup of that creamy peanut butter. Crunchy is okay. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult to mix. And two ripe bananas. Now it is very important to get ripe bananas because we are going to mash them up. And if they are not ripe enough, it is going to be difficult to mash. The equipment is going to be a large bowl a baking sheet, a rolling pin, a mixing spatula, and a cookie cutter. And of course, an oven. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. While that preheats, peel your bananas and mash them with either a spatula or a fork along with your peanut butter. So once you have your mashed bananas and your peanut butter combined, you combine that mixture with the rice flour but you're going to do it with one half cup of rice flour at a time. So you're going to take half of your um, measurement of the rice flour you have and mix that with your peanut butter banana mash. And then once you have that mixed in, you'll add the other half of the rice flour. My bananas were on the larger side, so I had to add more rice flour than what it originally called for. Depending on the size of the bananas, you may have to add more or add less of the rice flour. So make sure you definitely leave some wiggle room in there and adjust it as needed. And make sure that your dough can form into a solid ball. Now it is recommended to chill your dough for about 20 minutes. Um, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants person when I cook. I did not chill the dough and it came out perfectly fine. But if you do want to firm your dough up, go ahead and chill, or chill it in the fridge for about 20 minutes. The consistency of your dough should feel kind of like a sugar cookie. It should be a little sticky, but mainly firm. So 
If you're going to chill it, after 20 minutes you can take it out. If not, then just go ahead and roll it out. Either way, you're going to roll your dough out to about one-third to one-half inch thickness. And then again, using those cookie cutters, just cut out some shapes. Once they're on the baking sheet, bake them for 30 to 35 minutes and then let them cool completely before handing out. For these, it's just like before, you can store them for one week in an airtight container or freeze up to three months. And my very small but very picky dog loves these treats. Last but definitely not least are the frozen apple yogurt treats. These are very simple. They don't require cooking at all, just mixing ingredients and throwing in the freezer. Super easy. So you need one cup of Greek non-fat plain yogurt, two apples, one fourth cup water, a blender, a knife and a cutting board, and either a freezer mold like a silicone mold or an ice cube tray. So the first thing you're going to do is cut your apples. You can slice them both into small pieces. Um, make sure that you do remove the core and the seeds. I also took a peeler and peeled mine just to get them to blend up a little bit easier. So once you have both of your apples cut up, the core has been removed, the seeds have been removed, put those, in the, put those slices into your blender along with your yogurt and a splash of that one-fourth water. The reason that I say just a splash is because you want to blend this until it's like a liquid consistency. You might not need the entire measurement of water. You might only just need a little bit or you might need to add more. It's easier to add more as you go because you can't take it out. And then the final step is so easy. You just pour your mixture into either an empty ice cube tray or a silicone mold and you're going to freeze them for either up to four hours or until they're completely frozen. Now these two orange molds I actually found in my cabinet. They were from Halloween. They are just skulls and crossbones, but I thought the crossbones just matched up very well. And then the brown one are actually little small robot molds that I had used at a birthday party years ago. But my other dog is very tiny, so these treats in the orange mold are way too big for her. So I wanted to make some that were just a little petite just for her. I will say it is advised to only give one of these to your pet at a time. The apples can really mess with their digestive system. And to prevent accidents, you might just want to limit how many of these they get. And then, of course, to store them, you can just pop them out of the ice cube tray or leave them in there and then just store them in a container in the freezer. Thank you so much for joining us on today's video. Like I said, summer reading will last from May 29th to August 21st of 2021. If you're wanting to know of any other videos or in-person events that we are hosting this year, go to gatsonlibrary.org slash events slash calendar to view upcoming programs. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Dallas Branch Library and on Instagram at gcpl underscore online. Have a great day.